All right, hello, what's going on? Raise Brain Podcast, second episode of the week. We have Jack Bauer here. We got Bracken Crocker. He is pulling double duty, hammering a burger, ready to drop some big time analysis about High Rocks. So, I mean, this man's, I don't want to say a hero, but like pretty close. I wouldn't say I'm a hero, but plenty of other people say that about me. Not all heroes say he, capes. He's the uh, the Joey Chestnut of the OCR podcast community. You know, we just got done recording with Running Public, and I had like a seven minute window, and I'm just trying to pound a lunch here so I can give these people the energy we need to hype up High Rocks. We had so we had so much to talk about earlier this week, and even touch high rocks so we're going to do a bit of a preview here uh jack did a preview with matt on uh, matt at orm or i don't even know hybrid fitness we did it on hybrid fitness media yeah whatever the new one. whatever platform that 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 is even it's probably the same type of show i would imagine yeah so still matt we're gonna be here giving you the high rock stuff as it's happening it's thursday's recording this race happens tomorrow tomorrow you putting it out right now Gonna, I was going to try to go live, but we know Jack's internet situation. No, no, no. We're, I'm good on Zoom. It's never been bad. I know, but I can't go live on Zoom. I need a different piece of software. Uh, oh, the whole gotcha. Situation. The thing about soil, you never know when it's going to erode uh, and give I away. I know. For some that reason, that Zoom just, soil seems to be working, though. Maybe that's what happens here at Picture Frame. It does, that soil that screws up your internet it's yeah. so hard, it knocked all your picture it's frames totally, off. Got so many cracks in the wall because of it. That soil is bad. Busted your figurehead. Your yep. <laughs> action figurehead. No one's going to know what you're talking about, but yeah. <laughs> so where do you guys want to start? Men or women? Which race do you think is better? It's... More compelling? I, I don't know. I mean, we've been talking about the women's race because we're going to be able to see a third matchup of Lauren and Meg. And they are now, or they are now one and one in the races that they've raced against each other with Michaela out. So that's interesting. But with it not with not having Michaela in and having three at the top, the races are fairly similar now. I feel like for who's for yeah. the 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 winner. I don't agree. Disagree. Good. This felt like we were going to see this crazy three headed attack at the front, which we've never seen before in a championship race. And with Michaela gone, it's just what we're used to. It's Nicole and Lindsay. It's classic female Emma OCR Lindsay. where there's two ahead of everyone else. You always say Emma Lindsay, but the thing about that is Emma never beats Lindsay. So it's always I know like, that, we always we always want it to be a she big pushes build up. Her. Yeah, she at least tries. So now it's back to this heavyweight matchup of the two greatest on earth who are currently at the race. And it's going to be so, so good. But I don't think there's any drama other than that. If one of them cracks the other, I don't think that person misses the podium. Because you have one woman, I believe, that can come up and play spoiler if one cracks. But I don't think you have a wave that can come up. On the men's side, we have the greatest of all time who might win by two minutes and might not make the podium if he mistimes it. You have a whole wave of men that could all play spoiler. I believe there are eight men who could make the podium about give yeah, or take. I would, say. I would say that's fair. And we don't have necessarily that on the women's side. And I believe there are six men who could conceivably win the race. You can't say that on the women's side. So I think we have two very different races and that's what excites me. And because they're so different, I can't pick. The whole time I was so pumped about the women and I still am. But suddenly, Hunter's world record followed by a DNF just means that we don't know, and the chaos is what sports needs. I think that's a fair assessment. So let's start with the dudes then, because we have a lot to talk about. We started with the women on our show earlier this week when we were talking about Big Bear. So let's go ahead and talk about the dudes. You mentioned there's probably eight men who could all podium, six that could win, and really... I think any of them could win depending on how the race does play out, like whatever happens up top. But Bracken, you made the, this point in the past. Usually when there is a pack or there's two people who go out, one person is going to fall back. I doubt that the two at the top, who we we foresee Hunter and Kent battling it out, unlikely that they will both crack and then Correct. get swallowed up by the field. That would be amazing. And uh, yet we've seen them both crack now in races. This They've year. cracked each other. 
Yeah. And we've seen Hunter crack at North Americans. We've seen Kent crack at North Americans. Mm -hmm. And we've also seen Sandy lead. So there still is a chance. I don't believe it's likely, but there is a world where both do crack. I think that that's fair. So why don't we talk about that battle up front? Because that hmm. seems, like we mentioned before, that seems to be the story on both ends. It's now like a like two-headed monster on each side. And even though the depth on the men's side at the top is very strong, this is looking like a Ryan Kent versus Hunter McIntyre for this title, as it was last year. So Jack, what do you think when, when you're looking at this matchup this year versus potentially last year or any of the times that they've battled, Kent's beat him up couple of times now i think i i give kent do you give kent a win for anaheim yes i think, I think that, that counts too. i think that that was in retrospect a very poor decision by hunter to go and do that and then show that he's not in world record shape at the time like world record shape you're on a different level but the fact that he dnf'd with arguably his biggest rival the man who got second place at world championship and the, and the guy who's coming for him again this year like in the same exact race dropping out and showing that you can't handle a crazy hot pace or you, you think you might be a little bit fitter than you are and then reality comes back to you. I think that that was a, a bad decision on his end. Um, If he made it like halfway through the race, it's like, okay, some people blow up. They go for the 10K world record and they last 5K and then, you know, they can't hang on the pace anymore. But that was a really early dropout. And I know that a lot of things have to go perfectly well for a world record, which was Hunter's goal. Uh, to actually occur but I, I think psychologically that just gave a little bit of weakness in in Kent's eyes um, and I think that it's going to be a little bit closer than it would have been had he not dropped out some big time arrogance on on Hunter it's like this isn't a, a, a breaking to think that he could break that record that he did in in Barcelona in an American course even though he had the record on an American course before but to me that that shows that he might not be in the same type of shape that he was in last year where he was basically untouchable uh, Bracken, what, what you know about Hunter and Hunter's mindset, just being around him and competing against him for so long, where do you think he's at? Like, where do you think this leads leaves him after having one very high performance, one that might not have been to where he thought, leading into a, a race maybe, what was it, six weeks ago? Mm -hmm. where, do, where do you think his head is? Now, I can't disagree with anything Jack said, other than one piece, which is I believe it's better that he dropped out early than late. Because if he drops out late... It's because he couldn't handle the demands of the race. He dropping out early shows he couldn't handle the demands of his 319 second K coming off the skier and trying to smash the push. And as all of us have found out in, in hybrid racing, the course of the race adding up cracks the lesser athletes. Tipping over by like five seconds on any one station or run can crack anyone. And so I look at it like, to me, it's an it's a non-factor. He went out and ran stupid fast into and out of this into and out of the skier, and then tried to annihilate the sled. And he learned that okay, I can't do this style. But he didn't have that shake me to the foundations to mm -hmm. my core. I ran like six stations, and Kent was there, and I couldn't do it. No, I tried something dumb. I overswung, 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 Jack, and. Yeah. I'm going now swing. I have some parameters. Swinged. I think it's swinged. Whoa. He overswam. Over and, and swunged. He has the parameters now of here's how hard I can go out without being stupid hard. So if he loses this race, I think it's because of Anaheim. But if he wins the race, I also think it's because of Anna. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. He doesn't have like a great sense of where he is compared to his competition now. Right. Correct. What he did in Barcelona. I mean, as we'll see how these Spanish, these athletes who qualified on Spanish courses, how they're going to finish, chances are they're not going to finish in fourth and fifth, like how they're seated. And that's where his time is, right? Like he does not, we've never, we haven't seen Kent on those type of courses. So the, where he is compared to his competition, it's not like last year where he came in and he just knew. Right. He, he came into the sled push with his arms raised over his head because he already knew he was better than everybody that day. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to have that type. He, I, I can't imagine he deep down knows. I mean, the way Hunter thinks, I'm sure he's like, everyone here is a pussy and I am the greatest. Like he's going to talk to himself like that. But deep down, I don't know if he can know that. 
the other thing is tactically, if you look at the rest of the field, like in the past at previous world championships, you had Lucas Storath come out and just go out at a suicidal pace all the time. You don't necessarily have people who do that, but if somebody did that, do you think Hunter would go out with them? I know that a lot of the, the Europeans, they could care less what the slight conditions are. They seem to push it the same exact way, whether it's a fast or a slow course. So I think that you could see a few people just, just go for it early on, try to break Hunter. I, I don't know if breaking Hunter is a smart idea realistically, but I, I could see a few people like Michael Sandbach goes out pretty hot. You have like Joffrey Vassin. He's not as good of a runner, but he's a really, really good on like the skier. You might have a few people who just go out pretty hard, see what mm-hmm. he's got. And it could backfire if Hunter decides to go out with them. And he just showed that maybe a super hot p- pace isn't the best idea for his success. This is a really interesting spot for him to be in because he's never been in a place going into a world championship where there was more than one person to worry about. He had to he had to spot one person, just track Lucas, track Kent, track Tobias. That was it. I make my decision off of them. If they're showing any weakness, I just step on their throat and crush them. If they get out too hot, I'm going to play to my strengths and let them go a little bit. Now he's been run away from by Kent twice. He's also seen Kent get run away from by Sandy. Mm -hmm. And he knows that if he goes out hot, he's going to come off the skier with some company. And if he goes out relaxed, there could be three or four people who go out hot. He's just never had to deal with the numbers of the field that he has to do with now. And now you have that little bit in the back of your head that says it only takes one of them. If four go at it, only one has to stick to make it a problem. And he never had that before. I'm yeah, very, it's go ahead, go ahead Rich. Oh, I I, I was just going to say it's it's a a weird dynamic because um, we've seen recently just to do it like an OCR example, people didn't fear Nicole as much at Big Bear, for instance. And you, you've seen some of the Titans fall at other races. VJ missing the podium at a Savage race earlier this year. I think mm-hmm. that like the aura of Hunter is just this unstoppable guy. Like he did miss a podium at a world championship. Granted he is when he's on, he is levels above anybody else. Untouchable realistically um, when he's running a great race, but we have seen a couple of chinks in the armor. We've seen it throughout similar sports recently. And I think that you're just going to have a lot of people just going after him, like, and just work, not working together as a pack because everyone's running individually, but like, you you put pressure on Hunter and you're with them after the sled pull suddenly like he's been beaten when that's been the scenario in the past. So I, I wouldn't be surprised mm-hmm. if you see people try to do that strategy again. I could see that happening, but having people with him at sled pull, but only because a lot of these athletes are going to overextend themselves Overexert. and, mm-hmm. and Hunter, I think would have the wherewithal to know that if no offense to this athlete, but if Graham holidays in front of him, I don't think he's going to panic. I don't think he's going to no. panic if any, if any of these athletes who are the who race super hard up front and that's how they race in Europe and they're able to get incredibly fast times coming out of the first three stations just by the nature of their course designs. I, I I think it's going to be a little bit crowded and there might even be people like like how we see athletes who are early in OCR races that aren't that experienced literally run out in front of everybody. There could be a couple athletes like that here. So I wouldn't count on Hunter being super assertive from the jump just because I think a lot of these athletes are going to uh, be a little bit excited for this race. They are. I think we will know everything we need to know about their race after the burpee broad jumps because Hmm. both he and Kent, I don't think have ever lost a race if they've led out of that. And I don't know if they've ever won a race where they were passed into or out of that. Now, maybe one of them did make it one station longer before getting beat. But if they crack, that is the point. Neither of them get passed in the second half late in the race. They are both closers and they have cracked people by then. But the place to get them is after the sled pull and by the end of the burpee broad jumps. They're both very good at them. But you can steal energy big time right there. If Hunter ever has been passed on burpee broad jumps, he loses. Mm-hmm. And if you don't pass him by the end of them, he wins the race. Hunter went 202 on the burpee broad jumps in Barcelona. Kent went two flat in Houston and 202 in Anaheim. 
So he doesn't really have an edge there. He's got to kind of probably break Kent at that point a little beforehand. The run coming in and out of that is the entire race on the men's side based off the historical track record. Mm -hmm. That's what it comes down to. The way I kind of see this race playing out is now that Ken has a little bit more experience this year, he seems to have really been dialed in in terms of how to race this event, where before it was more OCR style, like be aggressive up front, like take it take it to people. And that's how he beat Hunter at North American Championships. So in his head, he thought that was the formula. And in these two races that he raced so well this past this year, he know he, he's dialed things back. He's really uh, conserved his energy through the push, hit the pull the way that he can, and then going into burpee broad jumps, he's moving forward. So mm -hmm. they might not even be together until that run out of burpee broad jumps. And it's whichever one comes up to the other one, I think wins the race. I, I truly believe that. I think that's going to be Ken. Unless unless yeah. Hunter is just that on that level that he's been on in the past where he's just better than everybody from the start. But if he's not and Kent is pulls in pulls up to him, I think that's how Kent wins this race. Hunter is this mythical figure to everyone other than Kent right now. Kent's the only guy, I think, that when Hunter walks up to the start line for callouts and everything, doesn't go, oh man, I misinterpreted what this would feel like. Because <laughs> we've all seen it. Hunter has a more palpable aura than any athlete I've ever competed against. He like the the light surge when he walks up towards you. He's bigger than you expected. For sure. He's wider than he than you expected. He has this this start line personality that is not what you want to be next to at a start line he has the ability to negatively impact your race by walking up to you and these europeans haven't seen him enough and anytime they have seen him he has crushed every one of them kent's the only guy who can look at it and say i've seen him walk up like that and i've taken his soul no one else has even been really competitive with him other than tobias well who doesn't seem to be the person that he has been there's actually and sandy's there's four athletes in this race who've beat him. Who have beaten him. Yeah. That one race where he did fall right. apart. Yeah, it was like Tobias beat him, and then Alex was second, and uh, our guy Tiago, Tiago was third. There. But I think that was far enough in the past that they don't remember that. They remember Vegas. They remember Barcelona. I think only Kent truly believes and knows in his core that he, he can beat him on any day. And I think that only probably Sandy is a big enough dreamer or front runner to go for it. Everyone yeah. <laughs> else is going to have the hunter effect applied to them. I think that that's fair. I think that that's fair on that end. Cause yeah, Sandy, he's just like, if I don't win, everything is terrible. <laughs> he's going to go as hard as he can to be out in front, it, depending on how his fitness is coming along. Last time we saw him, we're not sure. He's a big wild card in this. Do you, what you do you need see this to be if you're not the best you have to be that like insane boomer boomer bust capability to win a world championship like this do you see this tactically being a little bit like tahoe in the past where you'd see robert killian or ryan woods go out super hard and just be like hey come and catch me and sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't do you, could you see whoever's inevitably going to win going out really hard and then just kind of not fading home but like dying a little bit more than everybody else, but still have enough buffer to hang on. I don't. Me neither. The only person who could do that is Hunter. And it depends on where what type of fitness he's he's currently in. I mean yeah, he I think... looks leaner and pretty dang fast um compared to what he what he was last year. I, I'd say he's probably like 10 pounds lighter just in pictures. He was light like he was like 190, 192 last year. Yeah. He, he was like as lean as I've seen him. He might be that oh maybe I'm thinking a couple of years ago when he when he was a little mm -hmm. heavier. No, last year at the World Championships, he was like dialed in. Yeah, he uh, he is the only one I think that can lead wire to wire. Same. I think that Kent can make a sled move, but he can't make the move prior to that. His pull, I think he's maybe the most underrated sled mover in the field. Maybe in the Kent. in in both fields, Kent can just he's not he doesn't show up with a physical presence that outshines the others he's a specimen but he doesn't you don't stand next to him and hunter and fear kent but he can do things on the sled especially the pull that are just really really special so totally. i think he can make a sled push to the finish but i don't think that he can make a from the gun to the finish and i think sandy can make a from the gun till about 
five or six or seven. Well, <laughs> yeah, but I don't think he can go all the way. So no. Hunter's the only one. Like he might run a 54 and win from the start, but no one else really has that. Yeah, just to back up your point, Kent went 258 in Anaheim. Hunter went 257 in Barcelona on the sled pull. There's no one else who's within like 20 seconds of that who's ever done it in the U.S. And Kent is the one, uh, 317 in Houston. So his Special. ability, yeah, that that's ridiculous given the sled differences. The so what what's the formula here for? Uh, let's talk about the the European contention then, because we've mentioned Sandbach, who is coming in with an automatic qualifier, and I think his time is like 14th, obviously, because of all this, how ridiculous these times have have really turned toward the end of the year. So talk about Sandbach, who did get sick. He's kind of building back in. Last time we saw him was a race, I think, in Cologne, where it didn't go well at all. He ran like 67. He still finished. So he's a complete wild card, plus 800. We got him at plus 800 out here. And then we have Alex Ronkovich, who I think has podiumed at every world-level race that he has attended. He only has not podiumed in the race that he wasn't invited to because Hyrox does that does stupid things sometimes and they just like had that invite only and Alex just wasn't invited. They invited like some influencers to come out and get worked by Hunter instead. So makes sense. Yeah, that's that 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 does make sense. It's good for the sport. Yeah. Um so between Alex, Sandbatch, then we have Tobias and Tim Vinish, I think are the am I missing anybody with that? I think those are the other four that we're talking about when we're looking at this, this potential podium threats. Mm -hmm. How do we see them working into this race? What, and out of those athletes, who do you guys project to be the most in it? Alex. I mean, he's, he's got the title European. He came over, did pretty well in Chicago as well. Um, he's got previous podiums at world championships. I, I think that he's he's just a gamer. He'll show up on at a world championship and do really well. Yeah. Just I think with Alex it. is the European Kent in terms of what they bring to the table. He really is. I, I think that's a fair set. They're they're built similar. I mean, Alex Ronkovich with his what what is what do you think his steps per minute is? 120? Something like that. Just loping around, covering huge ground when he when he runs. Bounding. He, just yeah. Bounding across the the, the anti you. If you it. gave him alpha flies, he would have like eight steps per lap. <laughs> just, he He'd might be moonwalking. He might bounce backwards the way he lands. Um, I so I, I agree, Jack. Like he is the one who's been the most consistent. He has the most like the 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 most like presence. BK, as you've been like kind of saying, like he looks the part more than anyone. Tim Vinish is coming in here with the second fastest time. He's the second fastest individual in high rocks ever, right? Like it's Hunter's two times that were under 56. And then it's like Tim at like 56. Oh, something. So how do we, wh what do we think about Tim here? To me, it's if he gets the course, if this is a U.S. course, I think he struggles more than a Sandy or maybe even a Graham. I think Graham's so young that he could be uh, you never know what you're going to get. But if he gets a European style course, which he is just really good at, this isn't a slight on him. It's not everyone's good at that type of race. Right. He, I think, can be someone because he's aggressive early on. If he wants to be on the on the, the, the ski and everything, I think he can be up there pushing with those three or four guys as late into the race as he wants to be. That's the thing. You mentioned the course. We haven't really talked about it much yet. So the way the hierarchy goes in my brain, I, I had some, I made a mention of this in like a YouTube video about how I think how European course sleds are a little bit faster. And someone was like, do you have any scientific evidence to back this up? I was like, LOL, like, no, like what the fuck, what do you want? Like a double blind study here. No. So <laughs> sports been around for five years. You think there's a yeah, yeah, a long term study happening. Who, who's fun? Who would fund this study? Like for for that? So U.S. sleds seems to be the hardest. Then yeah. U.K. sleds are directly below that. Then it seems to be German. Uh, and then like the Barcelonas, the Hong Kongs, and all like the the U.K. Scottish Butter ones, yeah. what, whatever are new or the newer ones who are there's less races. The U.K. courses seem to run a little bit closer to to U.S. when it comes to the mm -hmm. sled push. And 
I think this is going to be a disadvantage for a Tim Vinish, for a Tobias Lutwig, who is a little, who are a little bit a slider in frame and who are used to being able to push the sled in 230 and come out and still run really well. Um, yeah. I've actually got some data on that. Data. So, yeah. So Tim, four races this year. If you look at his Cologne race, without the sleds, we're just looking simply at how fast he did the other six workout zones. He went 1757. Cologne had pretty fast sleds there. Big time. If you look at uh, the Maastricht for the European Championship, he went 1917, reasonable sleds. However, UK with Lon- uh, a UK course in London, 2022, he went 1933, and then Chicago, 2055. So when you have heavier sleds, he is notably slower on the rest of the zones, and it beats him up. So, or or clearly compromises him. So I think that you have a valid point there. That that those are that's a great point, right? Like the 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 sleds affect everything after the sleds. Now with those stats, you've all you all mentioned. I think it that that was from the race in the beginning of the season in descending order or whatever. So he may have improved that much, but a three minute difference from those later stations after this, when you take out the sleds, it is worth noting. Or about two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half. Two and a half. And then Tobias, who you mentioned as well, maybe struggling. He's actually almost as consistent as it gets on every single thing. The rest of the race, he has had five races uh, this season, four of them. If you take out the sleds and you just look at those other six workouts, his total time has been 1816 to 1824. So he's been within eight seconds of each other in four of his five races. I think you kind of know what you're going to get with him. You got my numbers up there? What do I look like? You got mine? You didn't go to no, the top 15? No, I only did the top Yeah, only top 15. Can it go, down, work. Can it go down to 22? Just me? I 15, can do that for you after. Come on, bro. Yeah. I'm trying to see. Should have. I'm trying to see. So, yeah. So that that's the one thing that could go against those too. I mean, you, you made maybe not even Tobias as much, and that might just be something that I assumed, but it seems like that is worth noting about Tim because he seems like he is in as good of shape as anybody else and primed and ready. He's also young, you know, so he could have, it could go either way. This could be a lump that he needs to take in terms of his progress at championship races, or he breaks out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he already did break out with his time, but you're talking at on the grand stage, basically. Yes. Yeah. yeah, this sport is interesting how you can become a star with your time, but you can't become a superstar until you perform at a championship. Yeah. Because there's always the questions on courses, but it doesn't matter what the course is at a championship. We've seen assault runners, we've seen the grid, we've seen full courses. Everyone has to go through it, and you don't put an asterisk on the world title. Mm-hmm. You're only seeing people put asterisks on the times so this is his chance anyone's chance to say i'm up there with kent and hunter because it seems to be clear right now that it's kent and hunter and it's the rest of the world playing for a third and you don't really have someone that you could just say is the clear next favorite for that spot no but it could be him it could very well be him he uh, he he's committed to it and we'll see how it goes yeah so bracken you were kind of alluding to like a lot of people can become stars with their like times as opposed to their performance and championship heats. That's kind of the analogy in other sports where it's like regular season versus playoff stars. Mm-hmm. What do what do you guys think about that in other sports? Because I personally uh, like it's a little different in a team or uh, team versus solo competition, and this is definitely a solo competition. But I've never been a big believer in like you have to have the rings necessarily to be considered the best in a team-based sport like that otherwise Robert Orr would be the best because he has the most in the NBA for instance um but I feel like in individual sports yeah it, it definitely matters you have much more tactical racing typically um in championship events and you can kind of separate the uh the true contenders versus the fakers who who kind of got in just barely uh or, or had a little not a fraudulent time but like a, a non-deserving time from earlier in the year I'm one of those people that cannot stand when they hold rings against team sport athletes because rings say as much about your front office as anything else. Mm. Yep. But in individual sports, I also don't hold rings against people, but podiums matter. Like I think Ryan Kent's like 29 in a row second place finishes at world championships is more Ryan impressive Atkins. than winning one. Ryan Atkins, yeah. I think that that... 
shows that every time there's a championship, he's up there in the mix because some people have days or seasons or time things. No matter what was going on around him, he was always in it. And that's like Kent. Kent hasn't won a world championship yet, but he's all world in the sport because he's never out of it at a championship. I think that's fair. And it's there's more people who win rings because there's more people on teams, 52 guys on a football team on the chiefs all have a ring, you know, but like when it's just one race, one winner, it's hard to really be like, Oh, if you don't win the big one, you're not that guy. I think what, what Bracken's saying is, is how I feel too, is like, as long as you're showing up and you're putting your best out there and you're placing where potentially should, or you're, you're executing at a high level, then you have what it takes to potentially win when it comes your time. But mm-hmm. on the other side it can happen too. Like if you consistently underperform then that's something we have to question yeah jack's out here muted it, yeah i know i i was coughing uh I, I was gonna say is mo farah the best runner of all time because he has a bunch of golds i mean he might be the best championship runner in the past few decades but you know that doesn't mean necessarily that the guys who finished just behind him who have faster times weren't also contenders throughout the their careers and stuff and they had a solid career you gotta win the races you got to win the races no matter what the time is, no matter what mm-hmm. the course is. And it's like, it, we're going to, we're going to see. And that's, what's so exciting about this. So we're going to see how those, those sleds really play out last year. They came to the U S and they took a weight off. They're like, you know what? These aren't right. Let's take this weight off and we'll see. And they still, and those Europeans still push the sled slow. I was looking back at it recently. I was like, geez, these guys still like, even with a lighter weight. So to me, isn't that the end of the argument about sleds? That the very first time the Europeans touched it and the officials were like, oh, this isn't right. It's like, yeah, yeah. You've been saying, like <laughs> your sample size of one blew your mind. And you, you took and one you off took and it off. 55 pounds, you. Not, not even the 45, 55. So I think that's the end of the argument for it. But to reiterate, we will have Americans blow up on European sleds for sure. if they're light because of the work rate. It doesn't make it any less of a race. It's just a different race. For sure. Right, like, yeah, so- I, I listened to Hunter's podcast and he even mentioned, he's like, whatever, because he was recapping uh, when they took off the weight on the sled. He's like, I didn't care because everyone's still going to run the same exact race. So for him to say that, even though heavier would be better in his eyes, he didn't really care. So I think, you know, the conditions are what they are. You can only, ra- every, all 15 of these people are facing the same exact conditions and there's going to be no asterisk in this race. You've got arguably the best field ever assembled at a world championship um so yeah we'll see who's got it yeah and the most of those euros last year were still like 330 or something like that that was like 310 and now they're over here pushing 210 I'm like yeah they just got that much better i don't know potentially so tobias is also someone to kind of look out for here he will run his race we know when it comes championship time that he will do it i don't think he's ever run a race outside of germany so I, it's hard to say what he's going to do on these, on these type of sleds, if that's going to matter for him in any way. Let's finish up on the dude's side. I want to say something about that, though, because Tobias is on paper the most accomplished athlete that we haven't put in the top three here. Big time. But he is one of these people who has met his mirror image who are younger and maybe better. Like he is... Dylan or he is Magida or any one of these guys that's going to run their own race. The problem is when you run your own race and someone else does it better next to you, you can't run your race anymore. Mm -hmm. The only way to close on people is if you're the person closing. If someone passes you while you're closing, you don't feel like you're closing anymore. And I think that's what's hurt him recently is he used to be the guy who did that. And now people do it better than he has. And it's taken away his effectiveness. It goes from he's off screen to on screen to he's never really in the race because you can't have that big transfer of like adrenaline and energy to you if you don't feel like you're actually the one closing. He's kind of in a tough spot where he might have to change something in order to fabricate that momentum again. Or just get get fifth and be like, I got fifth. And that's the best I can do this today. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you kind of just without... Uh, talking about the numbers, the ones that I mentioned earlier, like he does run his own race. He's always within eight seconds of each other in that output on, on the non sled zones throughout the race. And will he have the real estate to, to close on people and stuff at the end? 
it, it probably not realistically. And Rich, I actually looked it up and he ran Euros this year in 5904. So that was a course outside of Germany. And he also did uh, Basel in the end of 2022. And that was 5810. So, you, you know, you're probably going to get something in the... Where's 50- Basel? Uh, I'm going to have to look that up, but I don't think that it's in Germany. I... Psh. Okay, so he's done like Maastricht, which was in a... Yeah. I don't know where that is. That's not Germany. The Netherlands. Yeah, it's, it's Switzerland. Yeah. <clears throat> ah, okay. There we go. So never mind. Yep. Good, good, uh, good correction, stat boy. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. But be, Bracken, what you're saying about, I think that's going to be a really hard time for the athletes who are in this, but like nine through fifteen, when they are running slower because this course is going to be grid style. Also, four laps. Four laps, so it's going to be like outdoor track mile. So it's going to be slower. So if they are dialed in with pay, like, and they're going to be getting passed and they're going to be in 10 to 11, that's where, that's how, that's what happens to these zero athletes when they race in these big competitions. Instead of getting first, second, third, they're ninth, 10th, 11th, and running a little bit slower. And then it's all backwards. It's all backwards from there. So we hear people talk about that four lap thing. Who does it help? Does it help because the pure runners specific, or yeah. like who? It's it's the same distance. So why does splitting it up matter more? Who do you think it really helps to have four laps rather than three or two and a half? I think the slower runners, right? Wouldn't you think? I mean, it's Possibly. more slowing down slightly and getting up to speed. I I would argue the opposite. Because you're gonna be on you're gonna be on the course a little longer. Like let let's say it's half a second to one second slower. Like, I don't know if it's going to be a rectangle versus a smooth corner, but like if you have four there are 16 of those every single time that you're running a K that's 16 opportunities to speed up or slow down. And mm-hmm. I think that the longer you're out on course, uh, the faster runners, it's going to pay off for them. Like the effortless ones, such as a, a Dylan Scott or someone who's just going to just have that quick, getting up to speed, look effortless on the run, even Toby. Um, I could see yeah. that working out in their favor. And I think it helps the front runners because it starts lapping people earlier. True. So mentally, it really helps people at the front get away from people and out of sight. And then I also believe it helps the chasers, the people who are just con- – because it amplifies anything you're doing. If you're struggling on the run, every time you have to start back up after each turn, it amplifies that. So it breaks rhythm more. So the closers, people who like the Dylan and the Megiddo, if he's feeling good, they get like 33% more opportunities to slow the people ahead of them as they're rolling up through them. Yes, it breaks their line of sight, but I think it hurts the middle of the pack the most. Hmm. So it's going to be weird. Oh, I was just going to say, it's going to be weird seeing people get lapped because you get out of a station even if it takes you you in theory have no more than like 60 70 meters before you're going to reach a turn um just based on the layout because 250 divided by four and if you're what 10 seconds faster on something you can literally get an entire corner ahead and you won't know any better like there's going to be a lot of blind spots for athletes it's going to be packed with with spectators and stuff i think it's going to be actually pretty challenging to keep track of where people are relative to you if there's ever a breakaway let's finish with uh or i want to talk about the remaining two americans we haven't talked about and then just a little bit of that that the mid pack there so we have dylan and Makita, who are kind of turning into wild cards heading into this um uh, Magida has had some issues in the back half of the season, just like with being able to stay consistent with training. Um, as far as I know, his fitness is is really high, but his his like physical health might not be at his at his pinnacle. So he's a bit of a roll of the dice here. So I would imagine we won't see him battling up front. And if things are going well, we could see him make a push for the podium on the backside. That's a better formula for him, I think, because he you saw what happened in Euros when he went mm-hmm. over there versus when he was doing his own race in Chicago, paid off a lot more when he was when he was patient. Yes, there's more talent here that you know if if you go out conservatively, you're not going to win. You might not podium, but he could still sneak into the top three to five by using that uh, patient strategy. Same with Dylan. Yeah, I just I don't want to blow up his what's going on because I think he's. He probably doesn't want that leading in. But what he does have plaguing him right now is going to affect him on some stations early, mid, and late. Yeah, not great. 
And so it's not like he can get through six stations and then gut through it or get through one, work through it afterwards. It's either going to, his body's going to hold up or it's not. And we're going to know really early. And that sucks for him. Like it's mm-hmm. a, we've seen him race well on high rocks off being injured because he goes so in on machines and strength that he's a better high rocks athlete for it. But he can't do some of the things you have to be able to do right now for high rocks to be at a world championship contender level. And, and what's like, his biggest weapon? It's running. Right. Like, so if he's going to be potentially limited on some of the running based on what you're talking about, mm-hmm. that's taken away his biggest weapon. But he's also so much better at running than the field yeah. that like you could probably still run like six ten pace and get fifth. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. You know? I, like there's no there's not a ton of people in here who are gonna be able to match what he can do even at like eighty percent. So yeah. tough time, never a good time. But uh this is especially not a good time. How about Dylan? What do we make of Dylan? Yeah. Does anyone the... know? I don't know. I mean, no. <laughs> he's probably no. been on the bike a lot, doing the, a lot of been, volume, a lot of random do- workouts. He's been doing stuff for sure. All I know is I am not going to put him, or I'm not going to say that he's going to perform worse than his seed after what he told me last year when he crossed the finish line. So I hope he does well. Gave you that business. Yep. Dylan's one of those athletes that we don't see race super often. And so we know because we know what he does in training kind of there's this huge mystery about what is he going to be like when we see him next but it's generally not worse so even if he's like cycled himself into the ground and not gained any ground dylan at the last time we saw him is a podium threat yeah and probably fifth that worse so even if he's just who he always has been he's a he's going to be a fixture of this race and if he's improved at all then who knows what his upper limit is? He beat Sandbach. He beat Ronkovic. He beat uh, Venish. He's beaten these guys the last time they raced. He beat Kent there too. So like he's he's beat everybody in this field outside of Hunter and uh, he's beaten Makita too in the past. He's beaten everybody, right? So he he has the high end potential and like you know the race isn't gonna kill him. You know he's gonna be fine it just depends on how much improvement could we add could we continue to see and i feel like we've been saying that for years it's like how could he still get better can he still get better and now it's like he continues to do so so i can't really bet against him well and yeah. what did he run in chicago solo it's like 58 35 it's his qualifying time where is it what is what is hunter run in chicago uh faster definitely he's never that was a different course um oh, okay but not that much faster. Now the Chicago, the, yeah. the year he won the North American Championships, that was only like fifty nine something. Fifty nine. What does Kent run in Chicago? He ran fifty seven forty something. Again, these are different courses. But. Yeah, but I mean, there are similar setups. Mm-hmm. So, just bad comparisons. He's within a minute of Kent. If anyone can say that in a, just pure time wise, that's astonishing. Yeah. And to be ahead of what a, a time hunters run, pretty much solo when Hunter did that. It's astonishing. So he has that top end ability in theory. It's just he can't have someone go 56 in this race. Right. Right. Yeah. It, and to add on to your point, Bracken, um, with the similar or running faster than some of these top people on US courses, if you look at total time minus transitions and you include sleds, they're both US courses. In Chicago, uh, earlier this year, Dylan went 54.59 in uh in houston kent went 5501 if you take out the transition so he's he's basically been parallel to him on a u.s pretty challenging course Mm -hmm. so talent is there i think there's only two questions about him always the question number one is is he going to be close enough in contention that when he starts to roll he can make up the ground and north americans he was can he do that here? And then the second is anytime someone's a back half runner in any sport, the question is always what happens when it doesn't work? When you have an off day, when you're not like dragged along by a pack or something, if you are a come from behind a racer and you're just off one day, then you finish really, really far back. <laughs> you finish behind. Yeah. And he hasn't yet had that. Right. Uh, th- like, there's... No one goes perfect in life. 
Right. And like, this is an international race. He's, he's raced international. I think he was sixth in 2021 in Germany. Uh, so he has, a, he has some of that experience, yeah. but yeah, like you're right. Like who knows? Like if you start in 11th and you don't have it, you finish in 11th. Yep. I, I kind of see it. Like if you're a really good downhill runner, pretty decent on the uphills in a, in a course, you have one big climb and one big descent and your downhill is just not working that day. It'd be a long day for you. That's every day. Yeah. Every but I, I do day. think we, we mentioned the four. Yeah, we do. We did mention the, the four hard corners and everything. And I still think that that's going to play in his favor because of how smooth he is getting up to speed and stuff and his volume, he's not going to break down. Like does he we, can just keep going all day. Does wingspan help? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He needs to get on all Other. fours. I, I, I like his odds. You now I'm, I'm thinking opposite. I'm thinking that he's such a long strider, a loper that turns don't help him. I think they help Kent more than anyone else. So would it hurt Alex with his turnover? He's going to bound over the turn. Just yeah, over I don't the know. corner. Because not everyone plays by those rules. Sometimes long bounding striders are phenomenal cross country runners. So I don't know really what Dylan can and can't do on turns. Because I'm just keep flashing back to Chicago this year where he looked like he was just out for an easy workout the whole time and then ran 58 minutes. But Kent, we know, gets in and out of turns really well. And he has a short to the ground, choppy stride. That's really nice for moving around things. But I don't know. Dylan seems to be a rhythm runner. Mm -hmm. I would not want to break the rhythm of a rhythm runner. Mm -hmm. Dylan did go 27.51 in Chicago for his runtime. And he's that's the third fastest. McGee is the fastest than Hunter, uh, than Dylan. The fourth fastest is Tiago, 28.32. So he's over 40 seconds faster than the, the fourth fastest runner in this field when he's on. So he's got to weaponize that run. Got it's, it's it's hard with the 8K runs too, because they don't, they're I know, not always yeah. the same. I know. I, the... That's why I took out transitions in my previous comparison. Cause it, that, it should stay know. transitions. The transition should be, it should be high rocks. It should, I think it should be rock zone plus run. Okay. Cause yeah. usually that ends up equaling out. That's true. Yeah. Let's each pick one person that we haven't talked about yet. That we that could overperform. Who, who could break into this top eight? Tiago. He's okay. got a podium before. I'm gonna fade that you, one. I'm fading you've been, that. You've been talking. You've been talking crap all year. I don't no. think he had the worst odds. Nope, not I think, the worst. Uh, he, he was well, literally one point better than uh, uh, the worst odds, I believe. But plus I mean, he's done it before. Yeah. Yeah, I mean he has. That's true. How many how many people in this field have beaten Hunter? We haven't talked about so far. It's Tiago. Just so, and he's done it at a High Rocks World Championship. Magic can happen. Do I think it probably will? Probably not. But I mean, he he does have a track record of doing it in the past, and he's got several sub sixties, but he also has several over sixties by a good margin. So, yeah, he's he's hit or miss. Probably won't happen. But you got to at least respect the guy for what he's done in the past. Plus hundred thousand. I think anytime you're talking ceiling or popping a race, I just go to youth and I'll go Graham Halliday. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I was thinking as well. And he's the, he's the one, I think he's the only athlete here. We haven't necessarily seen race anybody. So that mm -hmm. could play in his favor or he could have a misunderstanding of where he fits in to this field yeah. and he blows up hard. Could be like the guy who wins his local race and then does a national series for the first time, and it's yeah. not as easy as you thought it was. Wins his podunk district and yeah. goes into yeah. the state meet thinking he's going to wipe the floor. <laughs> Oops. Leads leads the thing first 100 meters. Two different things can happen when you have people around you for the first time. It can feel like, hey, I've got a whole group of pacers. This is easier. There's energy in this group. Or it can just suck you into this style of race that just throws you off and you're less efficient and you're just constantly anxious and on edge. And then the other thing is we never know how someone's going to handle their first championship until they're there. Mm -hmm. Like I shat the bed in my first NCAA championship badly. And I considered myself a pressure performer. It's just a different environment when everyone's as good or better than you. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult to handle the lead in, the call out, the walk up, the lights, the not like it all changes. You've never run anything like it before and you don't know how you're going to respond to it until the gun goes off. And some people turns them into a rock star and some people it reduces them down a notch. And we just don't know yet, but generally youth is boomer bust at championships. He's going to, yeah. he could take last or he could just fire out of this atmosphere. If I personally was in his scenario, the way that I think, I would be like, 
I am going to get on the podium and, yeah. and like race outside of what I am capable of doing because of the lack of experience. We're in a race like this, executing to your high, to your highest end ability is how you're going to get the best placement. That's what worries. That's what worries me about him. Unless he is just so fit that he can do that. And he ends up in the top five, mm-hmm. which could be, cause we don't really know. We all know we, how numbers mess with us. We race someone and we feel them out on course. We understand that we're not with them. And then later on, you're looking at results. You're like, I was only X number behind them. I th- like all I would have to do is cut down X number of seconds per lap. And I I'm right there and I can do it. And it has to be with the, some of these guys. He's looking and saying, I'm just like the fifth or sixth best person on paper. And we all know how much better we can be based off our training. And then you're, you're right. Yeah. I think top three are bust for me and I can absolutely make up 10 seconds and beat these guys. And when you race for that, you increase your risk of bombing like catastrophically. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he has two in the 57. So it's not just like one fluke result. Yeah. Yes. The courses are different. Um, and what, how do you think that being from the UK is going to affect him positively or negatively? Cause I know that home crowd's probably going to be cheering him on a little bit more than the others. Yeah. Just like the championship, it can yeah. raise you up or lower you a level mm-hmm. added pressure. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We got to see him. Got to see gotta him at your first championship him. to know. Haven't seen him. And then I think the Jonathan win Jeffrey voice battle, they've been battling all year, flip-flopping a lot. I think either one of those, if they, either one of those athletes, if they pop something could end up near like that, you know, five, six, seven at the highest end. And that would be a really good result. I think Jeffrey was Joffrey was eighth last year. And I think Jonathan, you know, he's, he's finished around that nine, 10 spot in both the regional championships this year. So we'll see. They have the high end see- ability with those fast times, but. I could see those two doing what you and Dylan did last year. Going out, me, what I did was go went out feeling good and then just died horribly. You think they're gonna, that's going to happen to them? I'm saying finish in that five to seven range. Mm. Could be, but it's like the top eight is is tough. It's so tough. It's tough. This yeah. is they're definitely just, stacked pretty high this year. Joffrey, just just another thing for him. He has the three fastest wall ball times in the field, mm-hmm. and he has numbers two, three, and six for the lunges. So you don't want him near you at the end of the race. Mm-hmm. He, he can go if unbroken. He can, if he can stay intact physically and mentally and come into those lunges thinking there is time to be made up, he's the type of person in a championship race that just way out kicks his coverage because people are going to be crumbling like crazy. That's the thing. And like he's governed by his running ability so like he i don't i honestly don't think if he wanted to go with the top group in the first thousand i don't think he could so he's he has to run his race he's gonna run his race he's gonna finish where he finishes he's gonna compete well on the stations and just have to manage the rest and i think that could if people are crumbling and falling apart he's gonna be there to to pick them off he, he's not that bad of a runner though like if, if you look don't at even, don't even don't even tell me I don't want to. I mean, he, he's got the tenth fastest runtime in the field, twenty nine oh seven at Barcelona, uh, where, where freaking where they said Hunter was running five twenties. That that's true. No, it was it was in Chicago, twenty nine oh seven. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, which year? That that's this year, twenty twenty three. You said that's he has a the, fast run course. You said yeah, Dylan the, Scott went twenty seven fifty one. So you're okay. Yeah, that is that is a little questionable. They had a long rock zone. That's that rock zone's pretty pretty crazy there, and they were like zigzagging in and out. Last two yeah. years, the run times have been five to 10 seconds fast per K. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The London uh, 2023 and then Euro championships, he was 3209, 32, 37. So yeah, he, he definitely uh, needed to be a heavy course and have yes. people blow up a little bit. Yeah. If it was a flat 8K, I think he's pushing 30 Probably minutes. Probably right around I there. think he's pushing 30 minutes. Do we want to make picks now for- Do it. Jack's favorite. You want to go one at, one at a time or or just list them all off? You want to list the one through 15? Oh, you're going all the way? No, 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 <laughs> no, oh, no. Okay. Um, Jack, you go first. All right. Um, as much as I'd love to see Ryan Kent win, I think Hunter, he's going to pull it off. Ooh. I've got Kent, Kent in second, about 30 seconds behind. Um, third place, Alex Rontrovic. He He's just as consistent as, it, as you get. In the sport, um, fourth place, I think we're overlooking Tobias a little bit, but I think Tobias will end up getting fifth. Uh, fourth place, I'm going Tim Venish. 
Nice. I like that order you went. Uh, I, I was going to ask you, could you do the order one, two, three, five, four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's, great. That's perfect. No, I, last second, just t after we talked about our stats and stuff earlier, I'm like, I don't know if, if Tobias is going to have enough real estate to, to really After, after you were like, you know what? I'm not going to disrespect Dylan Scott. Just kidding. Disrespect Dylan Scott. Hey, you don't know. I could have him six for all you know. So that's the same podium as last year. I kind of think it's the, I kind of agree that we'll see the same people on the podium. I honestly think Kent can win this. I, I mean, I want him to win in yeah, my heart. I'm rooting like, for I him. think he can win. I'm picking him. Ryan Kent. I picked him in the, the hybrid fitness media, whatever. And then this is what is interesting, right? It's like if Kent breaks Hunter, what does Hunter do? Does Hunter He's do? Not, he can't retire. Does he? I know, but like, does he get second? I'm saying. Oh yeah, or does or, he get fourth? Or does he get fourth? If have we ever Hunter seen him loses, get? Have we seen him get second? Retire. He's not going to retire, but like, oh, he said he's retired. He said that like six times. He'll he's retired retire at least three times. He's Brett yeah, Favre. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he'll retire if he wins. <laughs> he's he's big time Brett Favre energy. Yeah, all through and through. And you know he's sending picks out too. Through oh, and through. Yeah. Through and through. <laughs> I um, think I have some. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that. So I, I'm going to go Kent. It's it's hard for me to pick Hunter second because I don't know. Has Hunter ever gotten second? He's got fourth. Yeah, uh, yeah. Kent beat him in Chicago, U.S. champs or North American champs. North American right? That's true. That's true. He did get second that year. So I'm going to go Hunter second here. And I think Alex third. And I'm stopping at three. How about five, four? I I don't know. I'm gonna put Dylan here at fourth just because the USA, damn it. And uh then I'm gonna go Tobias. Leaving I'm 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 fading Tim. I think he could get on the podium or gets overextended. Like I said, he's either gonna break out or yeah. or overextend. This is this is tricky, but where do you think you would have finished? Top two and not two. Top two. No, I, don't I probably know. would have had you. Four. I would have been. I would have been. Fifth. No, I think somewhere. Yeah, I, like I would have been in this top eight, top nine if I was there. Battle like it would could have been anywhere from four to three to. I don't know. I don't know. What better than twenty second though, right? I would imagine I would get better than twenty second, but you can't say. You know these courses. Yeah. Time speak for themselves. BK, yeah. you got it. You got you got something. Well, I got real all high and mighty about a month ago and said, I'm taking USA sweep. But that's when I had Megita and Dylan being ride or die bad boys for life coming up through the field. And I was just betting that one of them would be on the podium. Yeah. With still do it. Both of them. I don't think I'm going to say we get two of the top five. I mean, sorry, two of the top three, three of the top five. Which makes it the best showing by country. But I think we need a four man contingent to put three in the top three. I really believed that we were gonna sweep, and now I don't anymore. I'm backing off my bold USA chance. Dang. Do you want to predict who's gonna be who's gonna win the thing? Nope, I don't. You because don't do if it. you Can't forced me to choose, or if you even gave me your money to choose, I would go back and forth changing my bets all the way up until the start line, and I would be mad and disappointed with whatever, whichever bet I laid. I just, I have it as close weak. to even money as it could be. I know that's weak, but I'm not gonna. And especially because I have emotional ties to both men. I absolutely love Ryan Kent. I do. And I want him to win so badly. Same. But I'm also very close with Hunter. And I love what he does for the sport every time he shows up. And if I pick Hunter, it would be half to spur Kent on. Like he needs the chip on his shoulder, but it'd be disrespectful to Kent not to. So I'm going to pick Hunter because it's win-win for me. That way, if I'm right, I'm right. And I'm happy for Hunter, but this gives Kent exactly what he needs. Nice. Kent, you're not I, good enough. I'm sorry. I would want to receive There's a no message. World. There's yeah. no world in which you can beat Hunter, especially overseas. You haven't traveled well overseas. You just, you can't do it. And I'm sorry. And you're probably aging out of the sport. Ooh. You got kids now. Oh. I, I, I just don't see any world in which Kent wins. Shade. There. I like it. I've okay. laid all the Boom. chips onto the table for him. Take them all and go win this thing, Ryan. Put it, Kent. Put it, put it on his shoulders. 
Yeah, I, I want to receive a nasty text from him Friday night. That'll make me happy. The uh, if he pulls it off. Sandy, give me Sandy. You going Sandy third? Third. Yeah, I just I love me a boomer bust. <laughs> it should be Ronkovic, but uh, give me Sandy. He's just shown me enough that I'm intrigued by this individual. Not afraid. And he might be first. That would be. That could happen. That could happen. Yeah. If if there's a Euro out here who's going to win this race, it's him. He might be 50 meters clear early and then just never comes back and then gets to wall balls. And he's like, just sitting here, punching the stand, <laughs> punching his judge, hitting himself, and then just cranks through like just the finishes. last 91 unbroken after doing nine singles to start out. I just, he could do it. This seems like a very possible scenario. You take him third. All right. I, I would not want to be Mike, <clears throat> Michael Sambach reaching the wall balls, uh, not in first place, because his fastest time this year is 434. And that's outside of the top 50 performances in the field this year, out of only the top 15. He just needs to prove it to himself. There's no reason yeah. he shouldn't be good at those, right? Like there's zero reason of everything else he can do that he's not good at wall balls. It's just like, yep. If and if he pay, if he's coming out here and he's like, you know, I didn't have the lead up that I wanted and I'm just going to run my own race. I think he gets like top five or third. I think he could get third if he just runs his own race. But if he goes out there and tries to, to like, like he strains so hard to be in the front in the beginning of these races, you just like feel it from him. It's like, this dude needs to like chill out. But uh, if he does that, I think he gets, he could get ninth. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. Women, let's move on. That was longer Richard, than I thought. I do, How you doing? I do have I do have one last thing. You, you and uh, Nick Breaker on your your odds episode. Mm -hmm. um, no one probably would have taken your bets because I, I ran the numbers and you guys had like a ninety percent uh, like uh, house edge. I think that's what it's called. Where like you'll probably make ninety percent more money than you'll you'll end up giving away. And most people who actually bet wouldn't do something like that. So you you guys had unreasonable odds. Uh, we're playing for us. We were playing for us to win. And it's yep. hard because we, if no one's putting money on it, we can't adjust the freaking lines. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just give you one moved, other. We would have moved them accordingly. Thanks a lot, Jack. Yeah. Hey, I'm just telling you. Um, but I'll just give you an example. 2016 Olympics, Usain Bolt had, was minus 225 to win. Justin Gatlin was plus 200. The next closest was plus 1400. So you having a bunch of people in like the hundreds, you'd need to lengthen the odds to make it a little bit more uh, risk makes, for, makes for, for, for people to do it. Makes worse content if we're like, all right, 100, negative 125, Kemp plus 150, then Ronchevich plus 10,000. That's, that's true. Yeah. That could be, that, I mean, that's what it really is. With, with Rich is saving yeah, his plus 100,000s for personal slights. He's not going to accept money lines. <laughs> plus 100,000 and ones for the people yeah, yeah. in here. Very common number. But anyway, I just ran the numbers, wanted to bash Nick Breaker real quick. Well, uh, we needed the, what, the public you money to that. Uh, to I adjust know. it, we'd record a whole episode for that. We're, yeah, yeah. We, we we'll have some downtime here at some point. We'll just do a full Nick Riker bashing episode. That'd be great. Yeah, ladies. So let's talk about the the race at the front. We mentioned Mikaela. She is pulling out for health reasons. With it was a three dog race. Now it's two. If we look back at history about how at least one individual likes to run these races. It could be easy just to predict. Lauren's going to go out hard. Meg's either going to go right on her shoulder or a little bit off of her shoulder. And then they do eight stations and seven more runs. And we just see how it plays out at the end. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's what's going to happen? Do you think that those two yeah. immediately pull away? Yeah. I do. Yeah. I haven't I haven't seen more than one, maybe two other women who can come off skier with them. And they're gone at the end of the sled and then in the subsequent run. So yeah, I do think that. I there's only one person I could see going with them. And it's Chris. Oh, I hope she doesn't do that. And I don't think that can stick because you know she cannot sled with them. So I know I don't I don't see there being any drama outside of those two for this race. 
The only drama is if Miram starts eating down time on whichever of those two is fading. Mm-hmm. Or if they end up somehow capping each other's output. Like they're going back and forth, worrying about each other, and she just starts eating in and eating in and eating in. But I think they're two stronger runners for that. And I don't think Lauren Weeks has that bone in her body. No, even when she was fading in North American Championships, Alondra actually caught her going into Mm -hmm. wall balls. And I think she even passed her. And Lauren held on to her and still came in the wall balls, did them unbroken. Right. Yeah, like, she went through 313 versus 344 there. So even when you're dying, that's, that's insane. What's, that's what's hard about this field uh, for everybody else who are not Megan Lauren is that Megan Lauren are both great at the back two stations. You know, yeah. Megan in particular on the lunges and the wall balls, like even when she's dying, she's still going to go unbroken faster than Is this else. real? Is Miriam really 24 or under? Yeah, she's, she's like 21 under. years old. That's yeah. so crazy. Yeah, that's great. It's great that she's here. So yeah. she's so good in the back half. Um, she has the five fastest sandbag launch time. She went two seventeen one time. Two seventeen. I don't think I could do that without weight. Like that's so fast. <laughs> what course was uh, that at? Uh, Wien or Vienna, I think. Um, Wien. Wien. Yeah, we got that's the Wien awesome. course. The Wien course. We got to toss that. That's out. That that course wrong. All right. Uh, she went. 222 in wow. Stuttgart, two, and then 237 in Hamburg, 240 in Basel. Like, she has a lot, she's just fast at them. And then her wall balls, she went 255 two separate times, including at the European Championship when all eyes were on her. Like, you need a minute on her heading into the lunges, even if you're Meg or uh, Lauren. What are Lauren's... I don't know if I can do 100 air squats faster than 255. Yes, that's two two seconds each. No, that's like two forty. Or wait, wait, no. I would be hammered to beat her wall ball. Twenty, yeah. (laughs) That's disgusting. (laughs) Just doing push presses. If you could do wall ball push presses in that fast, I don't know with a light ball. Fresh, not at the end of high. Fresh, fresh. I could air squat it. Push press, I don't know. Push press, we need that. That that push press is actually hard. That's that's pretty brutal on the shoulders. What are Lauren's lunge numbers like? Um, Lauren on the lunges, she has. Ooh, she's not towards the top. Now that I'm looking at this, uh, she's not in the top twenty five. I'm very surprised. Well, because she's she's already spent it by then. It's already yeah, she's already killing everybody. She went three thirty six at Euros. 343 in Los Angeles, 339 in Chicago. So yeah, she's consistently in like that 340 plus or minus a few seconds range. That's over a minute slower than Miriam. And and uh Meg's kind of in the Me- middle there. She'll be like three flat, 240 something. Yeah, 243 Anaheim, 303 Euros, 303 Chicago. I think she's kind of pretty consistently right around that that three plus or minus a few seconds. You're right. So she's got a 30, 40 second edge there. I th- so this race could come down to the lunges because it's yeah. kind of a wash and wall balls. Like it's, you know, plus or minus what? Seven Farmer's seconds. Yeah. yeah. Farmers carry preceding that, you know, that that's historically been a, a rough station for Lauren also. So if you're Lauren, do you just hope it goes well and still do the same plan? Cause it seems like those are stop because she, it fades. In yeah. the back. I mean, Meg's gone 135, 136 for um, a couple times in farmer's carry. And Lauren's fastest time this year was 158 in Los Angeles. So another 30 seconds. She's She's got to be like a minute and a half entering the farmer's carry, basically. And that's going to be very, very difficult to do against Meg. Yeah, it's it's on paper. If you really break it down, Lauren doesn't look like she should be able to win these races. And yes, she's the two-time champ. But her intangible is like off the charts. And her her burpee broad jumps, her aggressive run, she just, she turns it into a fight, a street fight really early. She, she dirties up the High Rocks course so quickly that the splits seem to matter less. And yet, when she's been beaten, it's been that... Farmers carry lunge back to back. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. where the tide turns. So I think she can absolutely win it. 
doing the same thing as always, which is punch everyone in the face while punching yourself in the face and just hope that you can breathe through your nose better once it's broken than they all can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it also guarantees that when it claps and she can't breathe, she's the reason why. For sure. And I think it's going to be in those first couple runs and how the sled plays out, right? Like kind of the same, like she does a little bit better on the faster sleds on the European style sleds. This is somewhere mm-hmm. in between the two. So it might be kind of an even playing ground because Meg, although she is very strong at the sleds, she's not like that fast at the sleds, if that makes sense. Like she will push it on broken no matter what, but the speed in which she's pushing it isn't that fast. Where if Lauren gets a lighter sled, she'll probably go a little faster than her. To me, this all comes down to what has Lauren been doing? She hadn't done speed work yet the last time she raced. She hadn't been training for high rocks yet. Like it, we interviewed her pretty thoroughly and we couldn't come up with any reason why she won the race. She hadn't <laughs> done anything yet. So if she's wor- like if she's gone to town on farmers carrying lunges, I think she's the favorite. And if she hasn't, I don't know how she beats Mc- I mean, uh, beats Megan. She's been competing quite a bit. She's done a couple decas. She did the go ruck. I just don't think she trains that way, dude. I think she's the CrossFit background. I think I think she's constantly varied type of situation. She likes that, but and, and she just kind of like runs long, you know. Uh, so yeah. if her fitness is progressing the way that it has, I don't know. I don't. Cause that's the thing. It's like it's hard to. It's like a Chris situation where it's like, why is she so good? It's like, uh. But it also explains why she's so relatively poorly performing sometimes on farmers and lunges because she's not doing what they're doing for it. So if that was just a general lack of fitness and now she has generally higher fitness, it's just going to raise up all her stations. Right. So I don't know. She's the type of athlete I could never coach, but she's also the type of athlete you can never predict what's about to happen. Yeah. It's tough. Do you think that her mod is the difference maker? Like, cause she's not spectacular. I, I don't see like any ones to, you know, fastest on the year. There's not one thing that she's so much better at than anybody else. Like Meg's a faster runner and a lot of athletes have faster times. If you look at the individual splits, but she's just solid across the board, a fantastic runner. We saw that Lauren was only five seconds slower than Nicole Marigold is arguably the fastest runner in the women's field in OCR. And I guess she gave an attempt at hybrid and deca fit. Um, but I think that just her ability to not slow down when compromised, that's, that's her, uh, her superpower. Yeah. And her ability to win big races. Yeah. Right? She just like pushes she's... the button no matter what. Yep. She's going to go there. Yep. No and matter she's... what she did coming in, the gun goes off and she just pushes the button and throws herself fully into it. She seems to be the least bothered by mind games. She's just eyes down. I'm going. She takes complete control of her, of the race by doing by doing what she wants to do right from the start. Like no one else yeah. is going to dictate her yeah. race for her. Which like now the athletes are catching up could be a reason why she doesn't continue to win these races. Right? Mm-hmm. Like she can pull things back a little bit and pick spots to make moves as opposed to just like putting it out there and whoever wants to come can come. And if you don't like, she, you might not catch her cause she's so solid. Like, mm-hmm. you're not, like you said, Jack, she's might not be exceptional anywhere uh, outside of her toughness and her like willingness yeah. to dictate. She's just a, the dog. Race. She's just a dog. Yep. Yeah. It's not going to be fun to beat her. I would love to see her next year. Just like a random local event. She already got her qualifying time. Just go out in four flat free opening K Just see what happens. Just she'll never do it. I don't think she's capable of it, but I don't know. I, we might see some some interesting results if she did it. When I was talking about hybrid or 3K, how I don't think as many people are afraid to race VJ, even though you know you just may never beat him. Like He's going to beat you, but you can kind of do whatever you want. He might sit for a while, but you don't really want to go against Rylan because win, lose, or draw, it's going to be miserable. To me, that's Meg and Lauren. No one really wants to race Meg because you know you probably can't beat her, but you don't want to just be in the race with Lauren. Right. She guarantees it sucks. Like you, like, yeah, you might not beat her and you might blow up really bad. <laughs> yeah. Right? And if you beat her, it's going to be miserable. Right. And it, or, or yeah, or you just don't race her and you, and she beats you. 
Yeah. VJ will allow you to do a sit and accelerate race. Whereas Rylan won't. And yeah. uh, Lauren's not going to allow tactics to enter into this. No. No. Where where that's where we saw Michaela kind of excel. Like her tactics were pretty mm-hmm. advanced, even for someone who is so new at the sport and new to like just longer distance stuff as a whole. Um, she timed her run attacks well. Like yeah, just she cr- like her her Chicago was like just how you do it. That is just like the gold standard of of how to race this thing. Yeah, and we've never seen someone be so confident heading into the sled pull after being so terrible at the push. Like generally, that tips you or breaks you. And she got done like, yes, I can't wait to do this next one. Mm-hmm. You've never, I don't think of it. I can't think of any other athlete with such a disparity between the two. But she weaponized it. Yeah, and the way that she was able to hold on to her energy and made up like ten seconds on the row, just the row, which is almost like unheard of against athletes who are good <laughs> the be- yeah, yeah the best athletes in the world yeah so it's unfortunate she's not going to be there but we gotta understand that she's doing what's good for her long-term health yeah. and uh so respect to that and hopefully we, we do get to see her out here in the near future so one other the- thing with lauren she's less pregnant also so less pregnant she is yep. it's gonna point. be i don't know i feel like she's just continually getting better and better uh post-pregnancy and you know, it's a good time to to be less pregnant. <laughs> Are you writing Miriam's Miriam's name in pen for that third spot? Pen oh. marker. Marker no. Sharpie. Wash uh, a Crayola. Yeah, yeah. What's what, what, a branding iron? Wow, you got her third lock. I would if Alondra Greenlee didn't exist in this universe. Yeah, I agree. I don't think it's a sure thing. I think I think we could see Vivian. Mess around here. Be up in that mix. I think so as well. Alondra has run down Lauren, and that matters. Yeah. It matters. So Miram can and should, but we've just seen too little of her on these stages to know where she's going to be halfway through. We know what she's going to do at the end. Right. It's like if she's at all there, yeah, it's hers. And maybe second's hers. And maybe first is hers. She's at all there, it's a gimme. But we do know that Alondra will stick her nose in it. Mm-hmm. And we know that Vivian probably, you're right, Vivian probably will. And she's constantly trending up. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And she can yeah. Miram stick her nose in it. Can she, if she wanted to, run the first few stations with them? We don't really know. I don't know. Yeah, it's the thing with Alondra was leading the race for most of it last year in Vegas until I think farmers and well, Alondra is interesting, right? Cause she, she can seem to bump up to where, what her like red line is. But I think physically like there's something that's stopping her from getting beyond it. So she never really falls apart, right? She can like get to her high end threshold and just like hammer there or, but there's pieces of her movement or just like a running ability that doesn't necessarily like allow her to go beyond so she's dylan and chris she's in that mold i think so like that she will go as hard as she can and can't and won't go harder because she just can't. sub-maximal no matter what the duration yes and right so, up to it so i mean that's a great formula for this but like also it puts her at a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to being next to athletes who are advanced in like going fast like miriam miriam how are we saying this mirham miriam mirjam Miriam? No, it's definitely not that. No. I'm just spitballing. Yeah. I don't know. One, one other thing with Miriam, you got to realize her shoe's probably not going to fall off like we saw at European Championship. Tough break. That, All that time was, tough break. That was not a fun experience for her. Um, so I think that, you know, you, it's very unlikely that some bad unknown variable is going to happen again. So I think that'll put her in the mix a little bit more. But she was hanging with them for basically until what that happened on lunges i think at that point it was yeah, towards the end of the race yeah it was, the, it was that yeah. at the end of lunges and she wasn't hanging the, with them though she closed down i i know but but she's a monster at that point so like yeah. you you put her two biggest strengths which i already outlined earlier where she's top five best times and basically the last two stations um and then you take 30 seconds off of that because of the shoe debacle like she gets even closer i don't know i i feel like as 
as amazing as Alondra is, I think that Miriam just has a little bit better clothes on the race. Um, she's not as good of a runner as Alondra, but I, I just, I don't know. My gut's just telling me put her in third. In Sharpie. All right. Yeah. All right. Did she Alondra should. Get, she got fourth last year, right? Alondra? Yeah. Yes. And Mir- think, and she was yeah. in front of Miriam going into wall balls and Miriam's not a place her- you want to be. No, yeah. Miriam just did her thing. Yeah. All right, let's pick one athlete outside of this because it is really the top. I mean, the top four that seems to be where the race is going to be, but there could be potential athletes who could fight for that fourth, fifth spot. So let's just pick, let's pick one. But there's also some athletes on here who we might not get a give a ton of love, and we might not know a lot about who've had like some times that are uh, a bit of outliers that got them into here. Let's go ahead. Yeah. What do we think about Tara? I don't know what to make. I never know what to make a Tara for High Rocks. I don't either, but she's so good outside of it that I just know she can do it. Or at least I just believe she can do it. And she's not, she's just not, I don't know, on other people's radar as much as maybe she should be. And I think that's huge at a championship. And she has world titles. So, you know, she has the confidence to hang and she's beaten some people in a different format. Decca. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you can't take that away. She's performed on the big stage for sure and kind of gets overlooked because she hasn't necessarily raced a ton. Um, or like she she's gone over, I think she went to like Madrid last year. And but I don't and know, you, she's not in the same class as a Lauren or a Meg, but she's right behind them in, in High Rocks. She seems to be intelligent too with how she races. So like watching Decafit just it made me think there is something here you don't see super often in these sports. Like she has a bit of it. We haven't seen it in High Rocks, but I believe it can be there. Yeah, we've seen her in a couple of championship races in High Rocks now, where she has done uh, the European Championship last year, the North American Championship last year, North American Championship this year, and she and she did do European Championship, right? Jack, could you pull that up real quick? It. You got me? Or your, yeah, I'll, I'll pull it up. Keep talking. And there hasn't been a performance that we've necessarily been able to point at where she's overperformed. No. Nope. Usually is a little bit behind where uh, we would w- want to project her. And yeah, I, of <laughs> of people in the field, she was she has a uh, sixth best time from European Championship. I'm pretty sure – a couple might not have made the top 15 just off the top of my head, but I only have the the ones who are in this race uh, who are there, but she went 65, 52. She finished sixth there. Yep. Uh, sixth of the people in this field. I, I don't have the full results. I'm only filtered oh. by people who are in the top 15. So without Michaela. Yeah. Um, so she was, yeah, she was about a minute behind Viola, a uh, little more than two minutes behind Miriam. And then uh, who good couple seconds extra for uh, Alondra as well. So, yeah, she's she wasn't in it, but she still had a good performance. Yeah, we want to see her break through. You know, I, it seems like this. this yeah. She doesn't manage like the the sleds seem to kind of get the bet, best of her. So I'd love to see her manage those well, come out, finish strong, and you know she has a top, she has a shot at this top five for sure. Jack, who you got? Yeah. Um, I think a, a good closer, she doesn't, have, she doesn't have the running speed, but, um, she's more in that Graham holiday role. I think Bell McFarlane could surprise some people, uh, really good closer. If, if you look at her mm-hmm. wall ball, she went three sixteen in Houston. That's basically unbroken in three twenty four in Anaheim. So I, I think she's, she can hang with literally anybody in the field, uh, when it comes to the wall balls. And then for the sandbag lunges, she went two forty five in both. Houston and Anaheim, um, yeah, which is, you can move on the, those things. Yeah. So get her towards the end of the race near you. You, you might, uh, she might be closing on you like Miriam. She, the only problem is she's only running the 33 mid 34 range for the AK, which is just not going to put her in the mix in my opinion, um, compared to the the front runners, but I could see her potentially getting fifth. It's a big stage. I like that call. It's a big stage for, her. you know, we haven't seen a race against a field of athletes, as she's brand new with this sport. She's only done two in her career and is already taken off chunks of time. Of and yeah. Meg was setting a world record. It was in one of those races. So it's not like right. she, she had wasn't competition to, right. you can't hang with that. Yeah. 
She pushes. Yeah, I can't the, argue with that. She pushes the shit out of that sled too. Have you seen her form? Yeah. She like hooks her arms behind. She like pulls it behind her. Like she leans so far in, her hands get in. Her full arms are inside of the post, and she like hooks them She's, behind and kind of pulls it, and really and yeah, it's very strange. And honestly, we're uh, we're disrespecting Linda. She's. I know why she's not being talked about because she hasn't been showing it lately, but she's still young. She has history. Yeah. She's she got been second. close. She got second last year. Yeah, yeah. She's been close and she has championship experience and it matters. And, she, and again, young, talented. You can't bet against that. She broke the world record earlier this year this and year. Then broke yeah. it again. So she's, Broke her, broke the world record twice. One was Lauren Weeks's, and then she broke her own. Uh, we, yeah, I, I think she had some health issues toward the middle of the season. That's why she didn't really show out during the championship season. So yeah, I just don't know, man. The, the I, only I just thing don't with even her, know what to do with it. She mm-hmm. went seventy twenty two in Chicago, hard yeah. sleds, U.S. course. That I know she has a second place at a world championship under her belt, but like you shouldn't have that much variance in a rate. Like even when I don't care. the top athletes blow up, I don't, that that's a huge dip. It is, but I don't care. It's like such a dip that I just didn't write it off. Like, I think she was still up. like, she didn't You're race sick. Europe, Yeah. She didn't race European championships. Like what was it? Three weeks before that, because she was injured yeah. and then she came and just kind of gave it out there. And yeah, she got like, what, like 12th or something like, or there's only 13 yeah. people in that field, even though they said they were going to go past yeah. 30, they still counted at 13. So yeah, I think, she got like, yeah. I think she got like 10th. I'm just saying, I'm just pointing out like what, what, no, I know. what happened. Valid. And you're not wrong, Jack. It matters, but I just discounted like whatever. I know. Who cares? So yeah, you're she, not has, wrong, though. she has potential to get on that podium. That that third spot's up up to grab up for grabs. She's beat Alondra. She's beat Miriam. She she has very fast times. Her high end ability's yeah. there, but I just don't know what her health is like. Yeah, but her her two fastest times the sixty two twenty three was in Amsterdam in twenty twenty two, and then Basel was sixty three twenty nine. So both of them are from five to six months ago at a minimum. They come out strong yeah. them Euros. I think yeah. only Chris Peaked. and Lauren in this field have matched or exceeded her world championship finish. In terms of championship performance and yeah, experience, she's top three. Yeah. Let's, let's if she's finish. back to herself, she's third or fourth. She, I, I hope that she is just so because she, she can layer in some depth to this field and that mid-pack. Mm-hmm. And I think that'll be really interesting because there is potential for this to be like two athletes, two more athletes, and then everybody else. Let's talk about yeah. Chris. Got it. The word. She toast. The, I saw some uh, one of the uh, some prediction somewhere else on something had her as a dark horse. It's like, and then they def- <laughs> they defined what dark horse was. It's like someone who might you might not think of. It's like, oh yeah, the reigning world champ can't. Who's been on a tear lately can't in other races? It girl yeah. the sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. You might not have heard of her. Uh, just... So I think that she's gonna do well here. I mean, I like. Vivian and Chris are going to be the most who outperform their seed with them yes. being 13 and 14. Totally. I, I think that that is, uh, or I guess they would, that they've moved up to, right. They, cause said, this isn't updated. So I think they are, yeah. 11th and 12th. 11, 12. Yeah. I think, Chris, be the I think Chris was 12th last year. <laughs> oh. Is it going to happen again? Yeah. That would be, there was no Meg there. And like, Lauren was like eight months pregnant. <laughs> How is pregnant now? We've established. Yeah. We yeah. understand that that is the case. Yeah. That like how improbable it was last year. It's like te- a bazillion times more improbable this year. It is. But it's and yet she's leveled up. <laughs> but yeah. she's she's definitely on a different level and her confidence it, has got to be high right now. If there was ever a US athlete made for European course, it's her. Right. Like we saw when the sleds were lighter, she was able to do really well. That's really her only hang up in high rocks is can I get past the sleds anywhere close to the front of the race? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just, and- I, I don't know. I don't really know what to make of her. I think that she will get, she could potentially get on, get third. But what, what, what have I been saying? What have you been saying? Youth check. 
championship experience check making a podium the top of it at a world championship check knowing how to i mean you talk about being a race winner being the a gamer the type of person who knows how to win races check like she checks as many boxes as anyone in the field it's just that she has dedicated less time to the sport than anyone in the field right except maybe technically lauren weeks who doesn't train for the sport totally <laughs> at all <laughs> crazy so that's the thing right it's like our last two world champs don't train for it. Is that the secret? Maybe that's Rich, just are you it. overthinking things. Maybe we're doing too much over here. You know, I'm just gonna just go start frolicking in the mountains. I was out on the trails again. Mileage. Yeah. Get some CrossFit. Win world titles. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. It, she just doesn't make sense on paper to do as well as she does. Like she's nope. her fastest. She went 33 23 in the runs in Dallas. That, that doesn't make any right. sense. How how is that? Like someone who's got world championship caliber, like she's four to five minutes slower than Miriam. If you add up all of her times on on the uh, the workouts, so it's it's just like how does someone like that do well? But she always finds a way. I I think that you she probably has she doesn't necessarily probably keep track of chips on her shoulder and stuff. But I think a lot of people she probably heard all the whispers like oh well it was because Lauren wasn't there. It was Megan Meg didn't exist yet in, in this arena. Um, you know, that's why you won your world championship. And she's probably like, yeah, well, I'm actually pretty good. And, you know, I'm going to show you again. So I can see her sneaking in the top five as crazy as it sounds. Is it possible that she is simultaneously the most over under and accurately rated person in the sport? (laughs) (laughs) Like, yeah, she could be anywhere. And and like anything that happens for her, it could be explained away. Be like, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Oh, she won that, that, that returning champ. She got fifth. Yeah. She was trending up. She gets 12th. Yeah. She doesn't really train for it. <laughs> yeah, Prior every- to every major race, it's yeah. like, Chris can't win this. And she's underrated and disrespected. And after every accomplishment, she's like, she's the greatest athlete this universe has ever seen. <laughs> and we love her. And, and they go on. And then most of the time, it's like, she's just really good at everything. And if she focused on something, she'd probably be the best. Like she's accurately rated and consistently over and underrated at the same time. <laughs> like if she's able to pull this off, like a podium or somehow win again, that would, would just be absurd. She would have done 100 miles, set the record for World's Toughest Mutter in November and won a national series 3k race, including having the fastest eight minute qualifying rounds in a 1k looped course. And then win a very weight intensive hybrid fitness world championship. Like that would, that would be the the most incredible just mm-hmm. group of accolades I could imagine in this type of uh, the sport. And yet, if you just shift back, she already did it in a calendar year. I know. Yeah, you imagine if, I, if on the men's side, one of them did that. Like if Hunter went 115 miles at world's toughest or right. Ryan Kent did, or, or if Atkins comes in and runs 57 or something in a, in a high rocks and, and wins. Yeah. And wins. Like if, if, can you imagine someone, a man winning world's toughest and high rocks and then just topping it off with a three K series win? Like there's not a candidate in the sport. No, there's just not no the closest candidate would be Ryan Atkins. And none of us believe that, he'd be bad at high rocks and none of us believe he'd win the world title. No, even qualify for the world championship. Right. Yeah. You, maybe I think Ryland, he's, I think his high end is Ryland. Better. Yeah. Well, Current yeah. Ryland. Yeah. Ryland. Throw, throwing a D on there. The Roglowski. Rog, Roglowski Ryland. Roglowski Ryland. No W. Yeah. No Ryland w. Schladeg. Schladeg. <laughs> so who's going to get last? No, just kidding. We don't need to pick that. Let's do our top. Let's do our top three, Jack. I think you've already kind of done it. You did, or did you pick your top? Yeah. I'm, all right. I'll just go top five. Um, I think Meg I is going to end up winning. Lauren second place, third place, Miriam, as I mentioned before, fourth place. Uh, I, who did I have before? I, I already I did my prediction. Oh, Alondra no, Greenlee. Go fifth. Uh, yeah, Alondra Greenlee <laughs> in fifth. In fourth. I'm I'm picking Chris in fifth. I like it. I do like it. It's either her or Bell, but I'm, I think Chris, she's just going to make magic happen. BK, you want to hedge now or, or hedge later? <laughs> I'll hedge later, depending on what you pick. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm going Meg, Lauren in second, 
Miriam in third, Alondra in fourth, and I'm picking Vivian. Vivian in fifth. So that is four of the top five. USA, USA. You. Erica. Yeah. God damn right. And you know what? Because did you like? I heard I've. So Anthony Parasini, Lauren's uh, husband's writing up some articles about Go Ruck games on Hybrid Fitness Media. Great write up in the kind of, and there there actually are results for Go Ruck on, hmm. I think on Competition Corner somewhere. And Miriam pulled out of that because she rolled up and was like, wait, I thought this was a fitness competition. <laughs> so they had some like crazy long, weird Ruck situation that like, you know, kind of seemed like go till we tell you kind of seemed like torture kind of seemed like punishment and it just it just did not resonate for her in any way she's like i respect that me too i've been like are you kidding me but she came all the way over there for that so that's that's such a bummer so why do you think hunter and others didn't do it because vj dropped out like not or decided not to do it It, it's dumb that phrase that they use their catchphrase that everyone's hashtagging everywhere no one cares what you can do when you're fresh i totally get it for that realm but the entire sporting world is only predicated around that. <laughs> right. That's it. So no one in the military, that should be it. No one, yeah. parentheses, in the military, and parentheses, cares what you can do when you're fresh. And it's so applicable. But I was like, I wouldn't trot that out as my athletic phrase because there's no sport on earth. Yeah. That's it. El- imagine maybe like UTMB. <laughs> Elliot Kipchoge, you need to stay up for 24 hours before you do Boston Marathon, or else you're not tough enough. It's then on then impressed. impressive. Yeah, not yeah. impressive. Do it again. Yeah, yeah too yeah. flat under sub two marathon. <laughs> but what if you were wearing a seventy pound <laughs> ruck? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then again, I also don't really get behind athletes or civilians cosplaying military individuals. It's just not really my thing. I don't I think what the military does is beyond anyone's like reproach mm. but i don't have any interest in seeing normal people playing army that's just not my thing yeah. i'd rather see them just max out their physical abilities yep. for for from a sporting perspective that's what i don't yeah. like it's not it's not no one cares what you can do when you're when you're fresh like is like the opposite of what shoot. sports are yeah like it's Doesn't not anything for me i like sports sorry that's what yeah. i like yep. So, I don't yeah. even want laser pistols added to Spartan. I don't care if you can shoot in the middle of a 48-hour competition because we're not in the military. If we Red don't... Dawn happens, I'm going to want all of those people to come over and be <laughs> yeah. by me. But if it's not happening, I just want to watch a really banging race. That uh, Seeing what people are, are physically capable of at the highest end, Yeah, I care about that. That's what I care about. I care about that. So you can't say – it's like only Bracken and Rich care about what you can do fresh. It needs to be the new hashtag. I care about it also, so add me to that. And Jack. Only race Hashtag brain cares. and Jack. Only yeah. race I brain very cares. much support the military, but I don't need to watch people play military. Same. Same Z's. Bracken, are you ready to make two to three picks that are similar to each other, and then we can end the episode? All right. I will go, with, I will go at this alphabetically. Okay. Oh. Reverse. <laughs> Last name or first name? Jack, you do first name. Middle name. Go, right? Yeah. I'm always first name. Matt does it wrong with stupid last uh, no, name. We're going to go. I'm going to take go last weeks name. because somebody has to. The disrespect is huge. Meg's the shiny new toy. And I don't care if she is the greatest shiny new toy ever. Every single Disney movie that's ever come out or animated movie has shown me that when the shiny new toy comes out, we discredit the old one. And Woody needs some love too. Dang. Right? Picking against so, Buzz. So Lauren show up and show that the more things change, the more they remain the same. Jack has already told you you're less pregnant. There are less humans residing inside of you. Absolutely. Than used to be. Can only ready. be in your benefit. Can only be in your benefit. Yeah. She's fine. She's set. She's, good she's go. not, she's not racing for two anymore. So she's going to win this. Meg's going to take second. And uh, I'm just going to continue to be boring and say Miriam's third. And then I have Alondra and Linda. Vivian. Vivian. All right. And then Chris. And then Chris. USA. USA. Yeah, I, I think the Swiss are the only ones that can break up the, the US Dom sauce that's going to be poured out over this course. About we saw it at Euros. Be. Got a preview. About to be that. The race is happening at 7 p.m. UK time. Is that correct? 6, 6? p.m. Oh, I could be wrong. It's it's happening at 2 p.m. PM Eastern. Eastern. Yes. For women. 3 p 310 for men. 
I like it. And they're separating those races out, right? We're going to get to see. So this is great. Right in the middle oh, of my man. day. I have to Friday. take a look and see what meetings I'm going to have to cancel for tomorrow. Yeah. Are you I'm going to be able to watch it. Are you guys going to be locked in? I'm coming down with something. I'm not going to be able to yeah. work tomorrow afternoon. I'm, I'm yeah. taking off. I've already put in my time. It's been. You want to watch together? I'm down. The rich, oh, are rich you doing trash it? talk show. Are you doing a watch party with someone? They might pop on with Matt. You guys should come. Okay. I if I'm invited, we can get you in there. You just don't want to show up to someone's party like, hey, I'm I'm with that with that Philly guy over there. Bring We're gonna some, flip some cars later. Bring <laughs> climb some poles. Bring some chips. Oh, I bring guac. I, that's ah. my staple that I bring to the party is guac. Bring some guac. I'll bring the chips. I caught word that uh, some euros weren't too happy that I'm calling them uh, schmucks and goofballs. Like, Who'd you what? call a schmuck and a goofball? I just use it for the gen- for all of them. I just call them all <laughs> that. They don't like it apparently. I don't know. They, they shouldn't. I I would not want to travel abroad with you. <laughs> no, it's fine. It'd be like going to any African country next to Trump right now. Which was fine. <laughs> like, uh, I don't want to do that. It's fine in Dubai. Yeah. See, they would be. They would have no problem. They they get you know goof goofball. You know that's just everybody. That's everybody in the world who's not me. They're all goofballs. They're all schmucks. Charles Barkley calls people knuckleheads. Yeah, it's just Ritz's word. It's what I say. It's what I call people. No yeah. no no personal disrespect. General yeah. disrespect abound, but not just. Yep. You've been very personally disrespectful to many of them. No. And goofball is the nicest thing you've probably said in the last <laughs> six to eight weeks about them. If I were over there, I'd have no love for you. No, I'm sure. I'm sure. But I got to uh, stand by my man. We're doubles champs for a reason. But no I'm doubt. Not tr- we're not on the same flight. We're not sharing a hotel room <laughs> when we're over there. I'm not having them call in our room until five in the morning, setting off the fire alarm, putting flaming poo in front of your doormat. I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. Called the shit poop uh i i don't know that, that would be interesting to see how that would how it would be recepted there but whatever yeah um maybe fight you better hope it. next year world championship is like in switzerland or the sweden up in pirate country yeah we don't want it to be up there the uh yeah i mean whatever they'd be fighting for 10th instead of 9th if i was there that'd be the, that's the only difference all right i had a conversation with someone the other day Foolish conversation, and I want to pose it here as we exit nice. out here. Perfect. If you could choose one neutral ground location, we're talking really neutral for a high rocks. Can you come up with a better situation than an aircraft carrier or a cruise ship? <laughs> well, what about the waves that might be? Uh, Can you feel them on that thing? Doing wall balls? I Barely. imagine not really. Barely. If you get on a good ship, you barely zero. feel anything. Yeah. And you could you could just anchor it in a in the harbor doesn't have to be in international waters. Wasn't UFC doing stuff like that? I don't think they did. But like UConn and Duke, I think, or someone have played on a cruise ship. Yeah. And on a, not a, they, they've been on an aircraft carrier. But you can, you can, they hold events on these things. Can you think of a better world championship location than a cruise ship or an aircraft carrier for next year's High Rocks World Championships? Miami in the sand. There we go. Sand. That's going to give Dylan an advantage. Your chance to beat Dylan. Not, not yet. Not on. He <laughs> yeah. got fourth there. So that's what he's coming with. He, he basically his last race was ran like an hour and a half on sand. Best place. And then he violated WADA principles and got an IV. So oh. I've written them many letters trying to get him discredited and kicked out. We could expect him to be writing an apology post race. Um. Iceland. You still have to travel a little bit from Europe. Not too bad for East Coast US. They're opening up uh, Australia. So maybe like a Hawaii situation. Mm -hmm. Far for everybody. How about an aircraft carrier in Honolulu? I'm down. I don't know if that's a good idea. Explain the aircraft carrier part of it. Like Why? The point was it would be in international waters. You would just sit right there. Uh In the middle, but the, then the so idea how do you get there? Do you have to take effect. a rowboat or like a helicopter? I don't know. Swim. I'm not Maybe a I've got money on her then if you have to swim there. You just start on it. That's a great question, Brecken. Yeah. Think right. outside the box. Come up with our next location for world championships. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Let's watch this race. Let's do it. All right.
Fellas, and vote nice in, job. Uh, vote in Matt's prediction contest, Hybrid Fitness Media. We'll see you do as well. I'm going to do well. Me too. I'm in third. What book? I'm in third or fourth now in yours. Fourth. Fourth. Yeah. Drop the spot. Matt's first. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Right, I'll start more. doing it just to get Matt out of first. Oh, well, you <laughs> probably should have done it two races ago because you're not going to get enough points, but no championship belt for you. Individual races you could do just fine, yeah. but collectively. Just screw up the points. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, dudes. Great chatting. Twice this week. Super fun. We'll see you guys tomorrow.